It's nice that they put some bathroom decor in here. Can I get out of here? There we go. Nothing like a poop in the forest. Holy crap. I totally forgot there's bad guys. I don't see him anywhere. Hello? Was he even shooting at me? Oh, what the? I do not see this guy. Retreat. All right, maybe. Oh, there he is. Got you, sucker. One guy is making an incredible looking survival shooter inspired by games like Daisy, Stalker, and Tarkov, and the new demo of his game just released. Road to Vostok is an upcoming survival FPS set in a post apocalyptic northeastern Europe. The person making it is ex military and has 10 years of game development experience, and that's probably the exact sort of resume you want for somebody making a hardcore tactical FPS. And checking out the new demo, it's clear that the game is also being made by somebody who knows how to achieve the look and feel of games like Tarkov. Dilapidated, abandoned buildings and campsites mixed with beautiful nature locations. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to compare it to some of the more ultra photorealistic Unreal projects that we're seeing recently, but in one of the vlogs, the dev does discuss the visual stylings of the game and what visual elements or enhanced features that they're just not going for to improve the overall progress of production. And the whole game is being meticulously designed around actually being able to solo build the entire world. A really cool world that I really want to show you right after a quick word from today's sponsor. The latest update for Cyberpunk 2077 is nothing short of astounding. You can now enable ray tracing overdrive mode, which is a sneak peek into the future of full ray tracing, aka path tracing. You'll definitely want an NVIDIA RTX 40 series graphics card and DLSS 3 enabled before attempting to run the game with these visuals, but when you turn it on, it truly adds a new layer of realism. Characters come to life in a new way and the world lighting becomes far more realistic. All of the light sources in the game are now bounced accurately and especially the color bounce. Tonally, scenes change with the setting enabled because the actual colors of objects now affect the rays that are bouncing off of them. This scene here is one of the more dramatic changes that I found. Before enabling the new path tracing tech, the lighting allows for a lot of unnatural light bounces, but when turned on, path tracing creates a much more realistic separation between the light and dark areas and more accurately softens the shadows. Cyberpunk is already a visually stunning game, so pushing the visuals further is extremely difficult, but this new path tracing truly enables that next step towards photorealism. DLSS 3 is also allowing me to achieve crazy high FPS at 4K with these visuals cranked to the max, which is honestly just absurd. It's really nice to see Cyberpunk continue to push the envelope of what's possible in gaming, and Nvidia are opening new doors that are undeniably taking games to the next level. This is definitely worth checking out for yourself, and it makes me want to do another playthrough just to experience the characters and world with new depth and detail. All right, getting back to Vostok, or rather the road to Vostok. If you look at a game like say DayZ, which is being built by a team of people, and then you look at this demo, it really illustrates the insane progress that we've made with game engine tech since the days of Arma 2 modding. The DayZ standalone after all is built on an overhauled version of the Arma 2 engine. So the tools used in DayZ are older and outdated compared to what's achievable in solo Unity projects. And even then this developer isn't using all of the latest advanced visual features or anything like that. Nonetheless, for one guy to actually crank out something of this caliber is damn impressive regardless of the new engine tech. The pace of his progress has also been very quick. The previous demo build was released six months ago and was way more bare bones. This one has most of the fundamentals of the engine in place like looting, AI combat, weapon modding, and functional environments. Now, of course, there is a catch here. Road to Vostok is being developed as a single player game. It's probably the only way to optimize production in a timely manner as multiplayer experiences require a lot more problem solving and designing around. That said, games like Stalker, The Long Dark, and Subnautica proved to be wildly popular in the survival genre without the multiplayer features. So I certainly wouldn't write off a single player Tarkov style game at first glance. And personally, I think 
think, say, Stalker Anomaly, which is single player, is still an incredibly fun game to play as the world feels extremely real and the game is still extremely challenging. Plus, the dev is open to creating a co-op experience once the base game is finished. He's currently interested in doing something that will show traces of other players, but nothing is concrete at the moment. And as it is, there's still plenty to check out with this updated demo, so let's dive into it. And right off the bat when jumping into this, I think the thing that impressed me the most was the immersive environment. When you first load up the demo, it defaults to sort of a serene midday experience with nature sounds and general ambiance of a forest enveloping you. And you can actually change this pretty drastically with settings, but we'll look at those changes a little bit later in the video. At first, Vostok's atmosphere is calming. So calming, in fact, that for a while I forgot that there was actually enemy AI roaming around in the woods with me. Currently, the demo spawns three hostile AI in a random spot across the map, and every time you kill one, another one is added to take its place. And while this is a pretty simple system, it is enough to give you the impression of the game's overall combat and force forest gunplay. There's a variety of weapons to pick from, like an MP5, multiple assault rifles, an SVD, a shotgun, and multiple sidearms. Similar to DayZ, you equip weapons by placing them in slots in your inventory system. You can also organize your loot in this system to maximize how much you can carry at once. Now this build of the game doesn't really feature a lot of gameplay mechanics for looting, like encumbrance or armor, which pretty much means that you can load up on all the weapons that you can fit in your backpack and just jump straight into the PvE area without having to constantly rearm or manage your weight. The combat blends a traditional survival FPS like DayZ with the refined mechanics of more casual games. You can raise and lower your weapon independently of your stance, which is cool, which means you can have your gun at the ready or pointed down. Having it at the ready drains your stamina quicker with the trade-off of giving you, I believe, faster ADS time. And the stamina drain was pretty slow at the moment, but I'm guessing that's going to get tweaked significantly as the inventory and management system comes online more. I recently took a look at another FPS game called Ground Branch and it had a similar weapon stance system, but Vostok is simplified and kind of streamlined a bit more. The game also has standard lean abilities that let you look around corners. Weapon models also collide with the environment as well, so you have to give yourself some room to maneuver and potentially use smaller weapons for indoor firefights. Now the actual shooting experience is also pretty approachable. The recoil is realistic but manageable on most guns, and like many other games in the hardcore tactical FPS sphere, Vostok features dual scope rendering. Basically, the image you see in the scope is a second render of the game world with magnification applied. This gives magnified optics a much more real world presentation than games that just zoom in the entire screen or block off your peripheral vision while aiming. Though the options menu does let you turn it off if you prefer, say, the classic full zoom effect. Now at the moment, there's no automatic bolt cycling or automatic pump action uh, manipulation you have to actually hit the reload button after every shot. It does feel a bit tedious after doing this for a while, though I guess it technically gives you more control rather than getting stuck in a reload animation that you didn't want to engage in. Though I do hope that the game gives you the option to do this automatically. Now, I did find it tough to gauge how much health the AI enemy actually have, since sometimes they go down in a single hit, and other times it feels like you can almost mag dump on them and they shrug it off, but I think that may have to do more with me actually actually missing my shots versus the game having some wonky hit detection or whatever. And when the enemies do go down, it's pretty satisfying. They have nice realistic ragdoll physics, so if you drop them next to a fallen tree, their body will slump up against it realistically. The weapon handling system is pretty easy to get used to, and you can even customize the attachments on your weapon by hitting the inspect key and cycling through the different attachments in your inventory. One interesting thing is that you can change the optic position on your gun with the top rails as well as the reticule brightness. You can do both outside of the weapon inspect system, which gives you a really easy way to see the impact of moving the sight closer or further away. It's a lot like Battlefield 2042's plus system, but swapping attachments actually takes a few seconds per slot rather than instantaneous. And I really like the system as it gives you a bit more agency and realism over how your weapon performs. And adjusting stuff like optic brightness is a real thing that people need to do depending on the environment and weather. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, Vostok's atmosphere is very immersive, but you can also tweak it with different times of day and weather conditions. And when I first realized that these options were available, I flicked on the winter season option and it was honestly transformative. The entire environment went from a serene forest that seemed brimming with wildlife to a desolate and isolated frozen landscape. The difference really is radical the first time you experienced. And the fact that the engine can transform between these conditions so easily is impressive and it means that one environment should allow for a ton of variation depending on when you visit it. Now, having recently experienced another tactical FPS Ground Branch's insane time of day customization system, Vostok feels like an actual bigger leap. Game engines are starting to really emphasize these seasonal technologies, and I would imagine that we're gonna see more like this down the road. Now, there isn't too much more to the demo other than walking around, exploring houses, and shooting at the three AI that spawn in. It's really more of a demo to showcase the progress that's being made by this solo dev, and it's not, designed to really hold your interest for the long term. Still, I think Road to Vostok is an incredibly impressive experience, even in its current state. The fact that this game is being made by one person is something that simply wasn't possible with some of the older engine tech. How far game engine tech has come recently is insane, and I can't wait to see where all of this stuff is heading. It's probably going to get even easier and easier. And of course, I don't want to just give the impression that all of this engine tech is doing the heavy lifting. Vostok is clearly a project in the hands of a competent developer who knows what he's doing. Even with today's advanced tools, you still need the knowledge to use them effectively. Now, of course, this being an early demo of the game is still missing a lot of features that one would expect from a final product. Not being able to see your legs when you look down, the AI is a bit derpy in general, and key binding options are missing, and of course, other things. But considering the pace of the progress, I expect the next demo to be even more impressive. Smartly, there isn't a release date for this game. The dev has laid out an impressive roadmap for progress, but isn't locking himself into strict timelines. Even with careful planning to optimize time spent in the development phase, there's always unknowns that can lead to slowdowns. I hope this game doesn't run into too many of those, as I'd like to play the final version as soon as possible. But what do you guys think? Will you be checking out Road to Vostok when it releases? Does a single player survival game interest you? Or are you more about the bigger multiplayer experiences? Let me know in the comments and next up check out this crazy new anti-cheat technology that may just save online gaming. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.